let's move on to part two of this interview, which is about discussing your interview experiences at NCR and LBS. So first, speak, let's speak about your NCR experiences, and then we will move on to speaking about London Business School. So just for starters, NCR has you had two alumni led interviews at NCR. That is what usually the format for NCR Business School is. And so let's start by speaking about uh, both the interviews. So just we can start by. Uh, just discussing a little bit about your overall impressions about the NCR interview. What was the primary difference between the two interviews and who interviewed you during this time? So, um, both the interviews for both the schools, three of the interviews for both the schools were by alumni. And uh, so, generally, uh, the schools allocate regional managers. They reach out to you on mail, plotting you with some alumni. Uh, with uh, with LBS, they make sure that uh, they might match you with someone of the same industry. So they, I was interviewed by someone on the telecom industry because I was, uh, I am from the telecom background. For India, they don't follow such regime. But uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, so let's start with NCR. So uh, those uh, the two alumni were highly experienced. They, they were 10, 15 years down after the MBA, and uh, both the my both NCR in, uh, interviews were highly conversational, very conversational. In fact, uh, they they took the interviews at coffee shops, and uh, the one thing that uh, is very important is that uh, what. I think it's very important to match the tone of the interviewers. So my both interviewers were very different in terms of what they were trying to assess. So the first one was very like casual and, you know, very, very like, I think he started the interview with an introduction of himself that itself explains how open and informal and friendly he was. And uh, so he asked, so they, they make sure that they evaluate everything, but the way they do it is is, is like, like a conversation. So he asked me everything. He asked me about, uh, of course, about myself, where I am from, why did I choose to, to study at IIT, then why did I choose Vodafone, what were the key learnings at both the places, then then uh, I worked in computational sciences and then he was like, uh, so computational scientists uh, get paid the most, mm -hmm. so why didn't you do a PhD and why MBA? Mm -hmm. uh, then he started off by, uh, you know, asking me about the best day I had at work and the worst day I had at work. And uh, so the conversation was so conversational that it was being cut by his his enthusiasm. Oh, yeah, then this happened. Then he was jumping on to some other things. Then there was a project he was interested in because he was also working in healthcare and that project was in healthcare. So he wanted to know about uh, how the how that particular startup is doing and if he can onboard and how the regulatory framework in healthcare right now in India is. Uh, then we spoke uh, of how different I am from my IIT batchmates. Um, then he also asked me that why do you not want to do why did you not write CAT? Why didn't you go to these schools? Why didn't you go to uh, Indian B school? So on and so forth. Then I think it was a good one and a half hour conversation in which uh, he also asked me um, about what I want from the school and uh, which campus did I prefer and why did I prefer that particular campus and then he then he told then he started about his experiences as to yeah we used to do this we used to you know like party and then we used to study and then get back to partying for two hours and then he told me about his whole experience about how connected the community is so that is one uh, then in the end of course he asked me if if I had a question and then um, uh, my only question was that what was the image change, change he found. Uh, so of course when you graduate there are hundred things that change in a person when you graduate from a school but what was the image change he found at the day of the graduation vis-a-vis -vis the day he joined. So he explained that then he spoke about his family and that so I am from Bhopal so he, he went there once and how then, then he spoke a little bit about IIT because he was also from IIT Kharagpur and how his wife is also from IIT Delhi. And then it went on to 
not becoming an interview and something else altogether mm-hmm. and that's how it ended i mean um, it was very very conversational i mean not once did i mm-hmm. kind of uh, feel that he's trying to you know scrutinize on something so that was the first interview for him sir got it so just two three things stand out so one is it was a your first interview was 1.5 hours long so that's what you said right yeah Yeah. That's a very long interview, and uh, uh, so that's that's really interesting. So I'm assuming that since it was 1.5 hours, you would have spoken about literally covered all the dimensions and all the questions, right? Yeah. All right. So just to prod a little bit here, I mean, uh, so what kind of questions were asked? So I could figure out that it was conversational. Some industry-specific questions were asked about your industry. So any behavioral kind of questions? For example, how do you lead a team? Uh, how would you adjust in a multicultural environment so anything on these dimensions yeah so so when he asked me why i don't want to why i don't want to write cat and join some i am so i told him that i i know a lot of people and i don't find them very collaborative and i don't like the the culture in terms of you know i you know, i might sound colloquial but in terms of rat race and also he told me yeah that's a very good point because at ncr we highly recommend and encourage collaboration and then he told me that you know whenever he visits some other country he's made the best of the friends and those people not just come to meet him like they have to he has to ensure that they that he meets them to begin with and not just meet him they'll genuinely help them out and you know so on and so forth then he came then he uh, went on to also so he was kind of testing that will i be able to have that collaborative a uh, nature of helping people helping you know my my teammates my batchmates the community overall so he was saying that in in that batch out of 15 indians almost 15 of 12 15 of them are in india back in india and they meet once a month and they they reach out to it each other for help and i think that is what uh, the school really uh, values and kind of endorses so he was kind of testing that in a conversation and i could feel that yeah uh, i think i gave the right answer and he was argue, he was uh, sorry agreeing very much that yeah you're very much right on this and uh, so yeah i mean that that is something that he was testing very that was very conspicuous that he was testing that yeah Okay, so it wasn't done in a very direct manner, if I'm not mistaken. He probably like you know prodded a little bit from a conversational side, just by you know just just in a normal conversational manner. He did not simply ask you that hey speak about your leadership achievement and then you know did not participate in the conversation for the next three four minutes. Or did he ask? No. So he asked me. He asked me about what my best day was. So that was a project related to a project that I was leading all by myself. But he was so he was very like like I mentioned he was too informal. But I think I think they have this in their DNA the alums that they will test some aspects behavioral which I mentioned already. And uh, yeah, I mean uh, then yeah. So he asked about my best day and worst day and kind of you know he also asked me how I see myself differentiated from my IIT batchmates today. uh that was one then uh, the other question he asked me very honestly was uh, yeah yeah so he asked me that which schools have you applied to so i told him and what is your preference mm-hmm. and then he of course i said that the that that is my preference and then he asked me the reason and then he he was agreeing that yeah if i want to continue in consulting then mm-hmm. the school is is predominantly uh, for consulting and mm-hmm. and then we had another conversation on that so those are the few things that he tested mm-hmm. the rest were uh, more related to his industry and his community and so it was it was just a chat like chit chat kind of and one of the myths of applying to ncr is that you need to have a lot of international experience and you know you must have worked in xyz number of countries before you apply so how far do you agree with that statement <laughs> so uh, he asked me this also what okay. kind of international experience you have so basically when you go for an interview you are supposed to take a print out of the application form a section of which uh, under which you have to mention the countries okay. that you have worked in or traveled so there were a few there were quite a few countries that i had traveled but uh, i so my professional work experience international was very low like uh, like uh, 
you know a lot of applicants i had done an internship when i was a student and i had traveled to uh, traveled countries as a part of vacation uh, so my my international experience at deloitte was very brief and it was in the same subcontinent so uh, it was not very it was not a very uh, you know kind of something that stands out in my application that was not the international experience all right that's one thing so let's move on to speaking about uh, your second interview at insiad uh, and just to start with was there any difference between uh, your first interview at insiad and the second interview <laughs> yeah i mean there was difference of course uh, so she she uh, we she she was again and so they both were alumni of the same batch they were batch mates mm-hmm. and they were joking that oh yeah they were talking about each other with me but then yeah so uh, she was also very experienced she had corporate experience uh, and uh, she was into digital uh, digital technology field and uh, so it started off again as a conversation it was again a good one hour one hour interview and um, it started off by of course asking me so she started off by telling about herself then i tell told about myself um then uh, yeah i mean this interview was a little more uh, critical i mean it was not as free flowing she was kind of stressing and a little grilling on my short term long term goals uh, she was not very approving of them uh, and of course she asked me a lot of things about uh, why i want to do mba why i want to go to ncr which campus and which campus so i said i want i prefer the asia campus then she said why why not want in blue uh then uh, then yeah i mean so then there were informal questions regarding about the work culture at vodafone about the work culture at my other company mm-hmm. and how different is it from consulting what is the major difference that i felt uh while working at industry and consulting and um, then of course she started grilling on my long term goals that uh, uh like she was not very approving of uh, my long term goals but i kind of tried to justify mm-hmm. here again uh, i think it's very important to judge the tone of your interviewer because uh, you you might not of course you will have a point and you will have a justification of what and why your goal is what it is mm-hmm. but i think it's important to respect their opinion and the fact that they are entitled to theirs and you need to answer and address it very softly and you need to justify so i justified it using basic logic that okay i want to get into consulting i want to work in this region so this is how the school will help me uh then uh, she said that then she was she was fine with that but then of course she had uh, you know reservations against against uh, what i said but um i think i tried my best to convince her but uh, of course i wanted to make sure that i'm not very aggressive about it because i think uh, she she was very senior and i mean i'm sure uh, she has her opinion uh, and there are reasons so yeah so just perfect so i mean so i think that uh, so just to just you know just to uh, take all the boxes here uh, so just to segregate questions the kind of questions that were asked to you across both the interviews so your first interview lasted for 1.5 hours what was the length of the second interview one hour one hour okay so both the interviews were extremely long and that but that means that they would have covered everything right right from your goals to why a particular school and they so okay so what was the level of grilling so in the first uh, interview you said that you know the person did not grill you a lot uh, he was very very conversational in the second interview you said that the person did grill you a bit right and uh, so what was the extent of that grilling so for example if they asked you short term and long term goal you answered that then you know did they are how many follow up questions did they ask around the goals section just she was not approving of the whole uh, so she was she was not approving of the fact that I, someone can do that after mba what i had written but so uh, it was pretty un uncon- what i had written was consulting in a very unconventional service line uh, so she was she was okay with the fact that i wanted to do consulting and in a particular company she was not approving of that 
service line because uh, she was she was of the opinion that I have seen so many people who want to do that and she interviews a lot of people uh, who want to kind of work in that field but at the end of the day uh, you see a lot of peers doing a lot of different work and then you might want to you might want to get into that field and not the one that I had written. So the, I think that it was a 10-15 monologue <laughs> by her on this and uh, I think she was just trying to make a point. So she was not, see she was not exactly saying that no, so there's no right and wrong in someone's goals I, I believe. I think uh, some, it's very personal, right? I mean you have a goal and, but she, she was, she had an opinion about the fact that you know your your goal might not be this viable and uh, it was yeah she she really spoke for 15 minutes saying that this is not this is not i'm i'm not convinced of that you want to do this um but of course i justified saying that you know this and this is the reason and uh then she was like, then why do you want to do an MBA in the first place? Then I had to justify everything that I'm in consulting and I've reached a stage where an MBA is is not just necessary for for basic things like promotion, but it's, it's encouraged by the management team also. But I think the most important thing is that you should justify using logic there and not and not like you know come off as very aggressive no this is wrong this is right because there is no black and white in all these things what what your goals are is very uh you know personal and uh, very uh, customized that way i think got it all right so i mean very interesting uh point so i mean just two three key takeaways for me would be that one that you really need to understand the tone of the interviewer that's what you did perfectly and you need to mimic that uh, that led you to be non-aggressive in the interview. Uh, the interview was pushing a little bit. Uh, that was number two. And people were just freaking out a little bit after watching this uh, and you know, learning about your experience that it could be so thrilling. Uh, I just want to say one thing that NCR does ask for short term and long term goals on your essay, on your application. And if they were not convinced, then they would not have given you an interview invite in the first place. Right? So at the interview stage, it's also more about how you are uh, presenting yourself more than anything else. So it's not really about like, you know, testing the logic, whether this long term, short term goal is attainable or not. Because Adcom has already tested uh, for that aspect. So, all right. Yes, I think that's why it's good to not be very aggressive about it because uh, I think they might also be testing this that okay what is the person's response to you know something that he or she is not comfortable with then what okay. so I think it's good to to use logic and I think be calm and patient about it and, and I think of course at the end of the day she was not convinced but I mean I can't go on the top of my voice saying okay no 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 so I think it's good to good to be calm and very logical about it rather than being like black and white no this is right absolutely so you just need to be a little bit diplomatic and understand the tone of the yeah language. exactly you do you don't need to you don't need to show that oh you don't know anything <laughs> i'm the one who's written my goals i know what my career is i think they are very senior i mean my both alumni were so senior that i really didn't have the audacity to say that no this is wrong this is right what they are saying they might have a perspective and you need to encourage and i think accept it and then justify maybe okay this might be also correct that way right. so yeah sounds good so wonderful so the I think thing, sorry sorry to cut you off the only thing that is important is you should be consistent just because the person is grilling you you should not okay succumb to it saying that oh no this yeah i mean you shouldn't change what you've written in your essays that is one because uh I think that is then that is a fatal error. I mean, you should be consistent about in a soft manner, maybe, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't succumb to pressure. No, no, you are saying right. Then he or she might be like, "What have you written in your essays?" Then mm -hmm. right. so that is, I think, very important. I think those are excellent tips. Um, quite insightful. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that that experience about INSEAD. Uh, just from a preparation point of view, uh, how did you go about preparing for your interview and what worked for you and what were your key lessons? So my approach to interviews was uh, first you need to know about yourself, you need to know 
I think I evaluated every every crucial stage of my career till now, even personal. I think that inflection points in terms of you know why did I choose that college? Why did I choose that job? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it's good to document two three bullets against each question. So I documented that for for the school, and um, I think uh, then of course it's important that you why do you want to why do you want to join the school? Why that region? I think you need to be very clear about all this because uh, they, like I said, they will grill you. And if you don't understand it very deeply, you need to know the school. You need to know what electives you're going to take. You need to know, of course, the duration of all programs, which campus, which professors. So I think that way it's uh, it's very important to just. research very well i think it's good to just get attached to the school so if you get attached to the school i think you research even before applying and during the process also i think uh, you need to know what goes on in the school how many nationalities how diverse it is what is it you was it what is its usp um yeah and of course about yourself like you know why this career why that career basic experience based questions uh, which i was not asked to that extent but i think other my friends uh, kind of mentioned that they were asked that way okay. so that was the preparation okay sounds wonderful thank you so much for sharing uh, your insights about india that was really wonderful and uh, any parting advice that you would like to share before we move on to lps I think you have already covered most of the points. So any quick tips? Okay, sorry. Okay, so at this stage, uh, we'll move to LBS. Okay.